The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling this very great, unique word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkenu, to the highest, the only wise Lord God, our Savior, who in his plan designed for us to look and to understand what is the privilege of being born again in this great and unique dispensation of the church age being reserved before the foundation of the world. That great only wise God, our Savior, should lead us and tell us what is the truth for which we have been sustaining on this earth. And until and unless he opens us our mind, the way how we read in Luke chapter 24, verses 45, our mind being the basis to have your thinking straight, so that when your mind thinks straight, your understanding could be enlightened. And what went wrong in the first original parents, the federal head of the human race? Thinking went wrong. As we read in Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 28, before the place could be called as Bama, we also read there what went wrong. When Lord God Almighty led them to the place flowing with milk and honey, they went along to see not our Lord, but their thinking absolutely being strayed away from the truth. And they thought to seek and search every green tree, every high hill, they went along to pour their libations upon libations and they thought this is the only impregnable refuge or the way they could be retreated and they forsook the great and unique Lord. How they are not able to keep up those commandments and what went wrong that certainly they could have realized what was their worth of calling in the Lord in the Old Testament. Now the same thing being repeated in the New Testament. The worth of their calling being in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the reality of the truth. And that great worth of calling. So that you should be taught by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you are being made to understand, you are being put to death. And why are you still living according to the ordinances of this world? Have we not known what the word of the Lord teaches for us? In Mark chapter 8 verses 36 and 37 in the similar passages as well in the synopsis gospel. The word says, what shall it profit a man if he gain the entire world? And if he loses his soul. For what should a man give in exchange for his soul? One poet writes, If I gained the world but lost the Savior, would my gain be worth the toil and strife? Are all the earthly treasures worth comparing with the gift of God which is eternal life in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Not even a single soul could be saved, even by the treasures, even by your pious-minded natures, even by your religious dogmas which have been made in this world. Peace be to be those who are believing upon, upon my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that great peace which has been designed only through Christ. And that great peace which has been designed for believers to understand if they were be taught by Jesus, the historical name being mentioned for us in Ephesians 4.21 so that we could know the one who humbled himself to have the same mind of Christ having a leadership type of thinking and making us also to be having that great leadership type of thinking and we could be readily available by holding forth the head and we could truly understand the truth 
The believers are being called with a great purpose to understand these things. So that in nothing they shall be ashamed when they appear before the presence of the Lord. But as they enter into the salvation, the way how the Israelites were entering, says Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 28, and in verse 29 they have been called as Bama until this day. The church age believers are also after believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ while they are being saved with less than of a second by faith alone in Christ alone which requires no knowledge at all but to just experience but to just tell in your words in the audible inaudible in your soul to let God the Father that you believe upon his son because there is nothing on this earth that could exchange you for that great salvation in the law that great salvation dear brethren which cannot be really earned which cannot be really bought into it to save your soul that salvation within when you express inaudibly to lord god the father that you believe upon his son is of a great value for us and what profit the world deals with profit the great question today of the day would be what profit when everything has been totaled up, what will this or that transaction yield? By how much shall I actually have been the gainer? What profit? Dear brethren, there is no profit for a man that could think that he can exchange the value of his soul to be saved. Once an American millionaire said on a bed of sicknesses, the poorest man I know is the man who has nothing but money. Why I'm telling you all these things? The pastor teachers today, they are trying up to heap themselves money. And they enter into ministry as an easy earning process to raise money. And deceive believers by not telling them the truth. So it is today when the unbelieving religion dogmas teach for you. Make out your own salvation, work out your own salvation by your good deeds. And those good deeds require gold and silver in the past when Apostle Peter writes gold and silver, it represents the worth of money during those times of transactions. But today, literally, it means money. The physical or the shells, whichever you can have, the monetary papers. This money cannot buy for you anything. The peace which our Lord gives, it could be given only by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and none can pay them back. Your salvation has been given by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and none can receive it. Until unless they have in their own privacy of their soul to believe, to tell to Lord God the Father that he believes upon his dear beloved son for the plan being given for him in eternity past. And the entire world's money put together, they can't even buy one single soul. Far less today the people can think. The material value of money has been given by the ministry for me to earn and to enjoy and to think in other manners and deceive them to make the rizma, the root for all of these things being money. Money is evil. And that evil force is driving today's pastor teachers to raise money by teaching them false things. By making their handkerchief businesses, by making their oil businesses, deceiving innocent people. When will these people wake up to realize that there is nothing you bought into the world and there is nothing you can take away into the world apart from witnessing for the purpose where which you have been kept alive on this earth so that in nothing you shall be ashamed and your boasting should not go in vain in the presence of the Lord. Do you know what the word of the Lord teaches for us from where we gain the strength? In Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 29 we read very specifically if you have read in the original exegesis of the scriptures but you, Moses, you stand beside me. That is the greatest duty of the pastor teachers. To stand in the presence of the Lord. And when our Lord gives, when we are standing in the presence of the Lord, He causes us to go through the trials and temptations so that we could endure them and not to feel bad that we are not able to endure it. Why Moses was needed to stand before the presence of the Lord so that he can learn all the instructions, all the judgments that were being taught by our Lord Yahweh so that in return he can go and teach what they have to do, teach. 
Today, what is the major problem in our pulpits? No teaching of the word of the Lord. They just come here to tell some of their experiences, some of their bragmanies, calling it as a testimony. They just enter into the pulpit to tell you some small pitfall stories and tell this is the word and you have to learn the morality of the lesson like this, like that. But you have been called to have a thinking of a leadership side. You are being called to take that understanding given by the Lord when your mind has been opened up for the word of the Lord. So that you could be a witnesses for these things on this earth. Even when you go back and look upon the religion dogma stories on this earth, they have better pitfall stories for you. They can have their orientation with the creation as well. Animals being such and such, trees being such and such. And they love to tell you those stories so that they could be hearers for them. But you Christian is not been called for those stories. You Christian has been called to understand the dogmas in the word of the Lord, the doctrines, the ordinances which have been absolutely preceded or which have been absolutely justified and have been told. You have the examples in the Bible to teach. You have many things to learn from the Bible and teach, not needed to orient to other things. And why they are not able to teach? Because they don't stand in the presence of the Lord. They don't kneel in the presence of the Lord, to be much more specific. They have not become practicing themselves to study to show thyself approved unto God. They are not able to rightly divide the word of the Lord because they do not know how much needful it is for them to be constantly in the fellowship of Ladgar the Holy Spirit to daily learn the word of the Lord. And when Ladgar the Holy Spirit controls you, it takes you to understand the word and it teaches you the word. It doesn't have any other criteria for you all to think apart from the word. When they liked the mentoring ministry of Ladgar the Holy Spirit, there was a young man who already buried Anania. And then he said, the feet of that man is not already been, is not already been dry, but even you come as a sapphire and you tell your husband's lie to be continued. Faithful even unto the point of that, a great lesson that a wife and husband can learn. And she also followed the same way how Anania told. Then that young man who was there who buried, once again takes her, he went to bury her when she was being dead, when she spoke lie against the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We today should be like that young man. When we speak the word of the Lord, when we teach the word of the Lord, Certainly the people should change to understand the truth and not literally burying them but burying their all in nature life so that they could wake up again to the reality when Christ has been shining in them to understand the true purpose of being called in Christ. What you can exchange for this doctrine on this earth? What you can exchange for the salvation of great eternal life on this earth? What you can put all together the things pertaining for your profit? And why you as a pastor teacher think that you require money to be number one priority in our pulpits? By deceiving them, cheating them and not letting them to know the truth. You yourself have been holding the keys, neither you are entering nor making others to enter. You will be requiring to answer a great answer before the Lord for your each and every deed that you do in this flesh. Each and every deed. Each and every thought, in fact, indeed, and each and every motivation behind that thought, you have to answer for the Lord. But Moses was being told long back before in the mystery epistles, our Lord could write about the pastor teachers. Our Lord said to Moses, but you, you stay here. And now the pastor teachers should constantly stay in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And when he's daily studying to show thyself approved unto God, his life itself is a temporary sacrifice in Christ. The minister's life is not of his own. He has a much more burden to be done in the Lord. He has much more work to be traced out in Christ, daily digging in the word of the Lord. He's like a drudge. He doesn't have any time for other silly stupid things. 
So what did Moses do? He stood before the presence of the Lord. He learned those instructions. He learned those judgments. And he came and he thought. The very great work for the pastor teacher. First to learn and then to teach. First you breathe in. Then you breathe out. When you are breathing in. Luke chapter 24 verses 45 will happen in you. The enlightenment of your mind. So that from all the scriptures you can truly understand. What was the true purpose of being written the scriptures for our glory in the Lord. So that Lord could be glorified in us. And do you know what a privilege it is? That this Bible doctrine is theonistas. God breathed. It has not been written by man as other religion dogmas have been written by man. And they want to live a life of morality. But we are being called to live a life of virtue. A life of great dependence of suffering in Christ. A life wherewith you shall not be ashamed when you appear before his presence. When you are thoroughly executed his every word and command on this earth. What a great privilege it is for us to enjoy and cherish and nourish in this calling. It is of an absolute great value. But do you know, dear brethren, what many people are doing today? They have made themselves the world as ordinances. They have made themselves to bury Christ, not to themselves to be buried in Christ. Therefore, they are trampling the mystery doctrine under their pulpits. And they tell, weekly ones is enough for us. But the word of the Lord tells for us, when you can teach it, only when you are being there in the presence of Lord God Almighty. And when we are there in the presence of Him, and when we have been learning in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then the Spirit drives you to teach every day. Every day it tells for you all to understand the word. It teaches for you all to realize the truth. Every day you need to exegete the word, isolate the word, categorize the word. And every day you need to teach under the dispensation technique of dispensations laboring through the dust. Moses had a privilege to stay in the presence of the Lord and learn and teach them to the generations passing down. But the generations failed. The same thing is being repeated today in our pulpits. Apostle Paul mentioned for us daily what they are teaching in the pulpits. My heart has been burdened with that. But today there is no daily teaching. In Hebrews 2 we have to tell for us. Today if you hear his voice harden not your hearts. And that today does not mean weekly ones. That today means today if you are alive today it is. And who and where can they teach the daily teaching if God certainly devastates your flock pasture, says Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 30 and 31. If Lord can take away that pasture from you, from where you are going to teach him. And he says, how will you shepherd? Because you have rejected the truth. The simple principle why I am telling about the failure on the part of the pastor teachers is purely because they have thought they can exchange this great glory of Lord for money. And they are entering into the ministry for money. They are teaching pertaining to the things which have to be not for money. They are exchanging even the divine truth which has to be given gratuitously where we receive freely from God for money. They themselves have become stumbling blocks for this truth in the Christian realm. Dear brethren, Lord knows to provide for you. He knows how to cause you to go through the sufferings and you should be absolutely passing out with a good okay, tested. So that in nothing you shall be ashamed. This life is temporary. The profit of monetary gain that you are thinking, a one rich American man tells for us. The poorest man I know is the man who has nothing but money. Another one said, though a man without money is poor, the man with nothing but money is still poorer. Worldly possessions cannot bear up the spirits from fainting and shrinking when trial and troubles come. Any more than a headache can be cured by a golden crown or toothache with a chain of pearls. Augustine once remarked that earthly riches are full of poverty, but heavenly riches we are being called spiritual riches in Christ. If earthly riches are full of poverty, then how much more rich will be the spiritual riches or heavenly riches in Christ? 
Why you want to malign your hands with the things that are being of a dirty one in this earth by raising yourselves money? God blesses you. God gives you only when you are there in His presence, even the minute detail. And that presence is what when you are walking in the righteousness where our Lord tells, I am the impregnable retreat for you. And I will be the impregnable retreat for you in the seasons of your distress on the long time that you go through. And what I meant to say by that, when you have been there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there is no one unrighteousness thing that you will seek to do. There is no one unrighteousness means of gain that you want to raise this money. There is no one standards of you so that you can think that this is a pride, but in the sight of the Lord it is not a pride. And therefore you will fail to realize that I don't need this money by unjustifiable means. And when you are there in His presence, Lord knows how to give you those things. When you are there in His presence, Lord knows how to teach you and train you upon, upon those things. And that's not Philippians 4.19 teaches for us. In nothing you shall be having your anxiousness. But in everything you give thanks unto the Lord. And He shall provide for you even the minute part of the details that are required in your life. And how can you get those details, including from the slate that you start along to write, and including the last burial coffin box wherewith you have been placed before the rapture, if it is your death? Even those of the still minute part, as Lord directs the, the every minute walk of his life of a good man when he's been in the uprightness of the Lord. Likewise, our Lord gives to you right from your parents. And he goes along to give to you which is good, which is right, which is most. Because those parents should in turn train you up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And when you have been having your conscience sheared up to absolutely understand, yes, I have been having my mind of consciousness to think about these things, then you will give top number one priority for doctrine and you will love to please that great Lord by having a right and true fellowship with him. Then when you have been learning and growing up, you will be provided the right pastor teacher as well. Your wife, your children, your business. And how the Lord certainly develops you up in those things. It will be of a great, great, great blessing. Nothing in this world can pay you back. Because you know when you are having your spiritual richness in Christ, the physical richness on this earth are just for a pilgrimage trip. Those physical richness wherewith you can think you can have your security, you can have your health, you can have your satisfaction are all nothing but leprosies for you. Only spiritual vigor in the word of the Lord is your spiritual strength. And that spiritual vigor will cleanse you out from all of your sicknesses. When you confess those things, all of your pleasures that could be thought could be gained by monetary value of money will be replaced by the word of the Lord and you have greater satisfaction in the word of the Lord by honoring his word rather than indulging yourself to rob that honor which belongs to God by wrong methods because a wrong thing done in a right way is wrong. A right thing done in a wrong way is wrong. A wrong thing done in a wrong way is wrong. But a right thing done in a right way in the sight of the Lord is the only right process which our Lord demands in us. What profit you think you will have by robbing from your fellow men, cheating them, not letting them to know the word of the Lord. If you are being a bona fide gifted pastor teacher, you are robbing the honor of the Lord. If you are not daily in the presence of Lord God Almighty to study and to learn, to study and to learn, and then come and teach every day, you are robbing that thing first. Far less you can think, I have been a servant of the Lord. I have been in the Christendom of the things pertaining to Roman Catholicism. I am the bishop. <laughs> you may be bishop as far as your mind is concerned, but as the mind of Christ is concerned, you are nothing. Any pastor teacher who, was, who is not in the presence of Lord God Almighty to daily learn the word and to teach, then certainly that man is nothing. Rightly Augustine said, 
earthly riches are full of poverty and why do you want to work out for those earthly riches by exchanging the glory of lord for a lie by sacrificing your flesh and not healing the members of your body for daily studying the word of the lord but in return sacrificing your flesh thinking that you can fast and you can weep and you can wail do you know what is the result of the teaching which we read in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 29 30 and 31 the result of the teaching of Moses was everyone believed that and they went along to perform the things which they were there till the days of their life on this earth maybe the second and third generation they failed again but when they said we shall hear and lord has given us that great heart of fear and they certainly followed those things and they executed those things what they thought what moses taught to them they followed it today the trends which we look in the christian dam whenever they want to have their sermon every sunday till through that sermon they sing some worship songs and do you know what the music team will do till they all could play those worship songs they sit before him and when the pastor wants to start the sermon the worship crowd including the music team will disappear they come only at the end of the sermon again at least this minds of this people have learned to understand that this pastor what is teaching is of a lie is a fakery just to run ritually the church they are running it out but not with the intention of the heart do you know what is the major part in the service of the church it is not your worship it is not your drinking it is not your xyz reasons participation of your lord's table the major part of the worship of the church is to proskine to bow down and to renovate your thinking in the mind of the lord you attend there for the major part to take in the word and if that word you are neglecting then everything is been neglected you are just a hypocritical nominal christian believer in the lord but you are not truly the true believer in christ you are also heaping up yourselves the things pertaining to this very poor one the riches of this earth the riches that could come only in the name of this people but you are not really making up your name to be richful in the mind of Christ you are not making your name to be rich in the sight of the lord and you are not making to impress that great lord and that great lord doesn't impress by any other thing except from the doctrine 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 the greatest privilege which has been given for us in this church age is nothing but the mind of christ the greatest privilege what moses enjoy to be in the presence of the lord and to learn those instructions and judgments and came along to teach them we are been given the completed canon of scripture and the above all greatest privilege which has been given for us is the indwelling mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit who wrote the scriptures which was been given by the mouth of yahweh and now being conveyed for us through the lord god the holy spirit Is Moses greater than us? Certainly not. We are greater than Moses because we have the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Then how much more we should be in his presence and how much more we should teach and how much more every word of our word that we speak should be like a fire and every word when they listen they should certainly turn out to follow the truth. But we don't love those things. because you all want to follow those standards of earthly riches never follow the standards of the spiritual riches in christ augustine rightly said earthly riches are full of poverty when will the people realize about that if earthly riches are full of poverty then the contrary should be which should be of a full of riches heavenly riches and Ephesians 1 3 and 4 blessed in the spiritual realm in the heavenlies of all spiritual blessings there is none on this earth who could be more rich than you as a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ 
you have been given the greatest polity of privileges you have been given all these things and you have been made to pass through the pilgrimage trip for the trail and the purpose where lord has designed for you because he is mindful of you and beyond what you cannot end your lord is not going to tempt you but rather in return in your own sphere lord is going to tempt you so that you could be passing that examination so that you could prove you're worthy so that you could be absolutely available to say lord with thee i am ready to die lord though you slay me utterly then too i will trust in you but we say when our trouble comes when our trials comes when our temptation comes we go and look and seek upon those men who are having their healing who are having their miracles who are having their fakery of counsels and tell that temporary temporary elevation of suffering is what i will do for you you just come and follow me for 7 weeks or 10 weeks provide me and sponsor me for one program in the tv or you uh, the if the, there is a fight between mother in law and father in law <laughs> or if there is a fight between the things pertaining to the mother in law and daughter in law you can certainly think that you should sponsor me one program all this fakery of lies is certainly causing many people not to know not to understand not to realize this great unique word of truth dear brethren this is of a great privilege for us but it is not so much of a privilege that you are going to lie and take those things but you should be mindful about those things dear brethren god is going to provide for us it is our lord who is going to give us those things when you are faithful in his work and certainly many people have lost for that which is of a not a value at all they have exchanged for this earthly things that which is of no value at all dear brethren you should know that there is certainly far nearer the mark than is in the idea that a man who has 1 million dollars must be twice as happy as the man who has 50000 dollars never was a greater mistake made than this at how commonly it is been believed dear brethren the way how these people have their money accumulated when the government of the state comes and wants him if you are not going to provide for us the party fund certainly you will be killed then this minister says i will certainly provide you and he went along to provide 100 crores to that party because this man already has 400 crores in reserve i am talking about the indian currency it is far more correct to say that money is a universal provider for everything but not for happiness and a universal passport to every place but it is not for heaven the word commonly used for riches in the old testament is been frequently translated as heavy and this is very significant for the one who possesses abundant riches best knows what burdens such possessions bring what burdens such possessions bring the one who possesses abundant riches they know very well what burden such possessions bring but the one who possesses the spiritual riches of a great possession in the lord he knows what in return the burden that those possessions will bring and that burden will be to communicate the truth that burden will be to witness for the truth that burden will be that my men are perishing without knowing the truth and i should tell them the truth they won't stop there the spiritual vigor what they have the spiritual possession what they have the spiritual strength what they have the spiritual riches what they possess and do you know what it is dear brethren that is the true enjoyment in the lord we are pilgrims on this earth this pastor teaches if they would change to understand that there is nothing more profit for them than to realize for the word of the truth and to give number one priority for it there is nothing more important for them than to understand the truth there is nothing more important for them than to possess with the spiritual possessiveness of that great abundance of heavenly blessings with us 
how truly we would have this great regeneration of their thinking. How happily we would have cherished and made every believer to be spiritually rich. How happily they would have made them to understand because of this great poverty of privileges given for us, what a reality we are going through. Satan knows very well what are you in Christ. At the moment of your positional sanctification in the Lord, you are being made more than to be with the Satan. And Satan knows that. You have been exalted to be more high above than the Satan at your positional sanctification by faith alone in Christ alone. Your position from Adam, now your position in Christ is far greater. And Satan knows very well what a privilege it is for you to enjoy those things. And Satan knows it lost its salvation and it doesn't come for that salvation again. And neither it can take in, neither it can heed in for it. Because already the decision has been made for eternal lake of fire, prepared and kept for, for, for Satan and its angels which went along the one third of the path. But you as a believer in the Lord, you are not waking up to realize what is your privilege and great riches in Christ. You as being a pastor, teacher, believer in the Lord, a male one, you are not realizing that you are great spiritual possession and with that what burden it gets for you all and with that burden how many people you need to teach and you need to make everyone to be perfect and complete as long as your ministry has been kept alive in the contemporary age of the Lord which has been given for us and how grateful and how how thankful we need to be for our Lord because he is still gracious that none should perish but everyone should come to the epinosis knowledge of Christ and in this grace every day when our Lord has given for us, He causes us and He tests us to go through the trails and temptations. And the greater trail and the greater treasure a pastor teacher who is daily teaching, he has more than the president of USA. The president of USA pain or the pressure or the things pertaining to him, the burden what he can call, is nothing before the pastor teacher who is daily teaching. The USA president may have the things or the any, any of the country, nation, head, leader may have. As such how he is going to generate peace to that country. As such how he is going to comfort his people because for the promises that he has made before election. But for the past teacher, it is not just merely the visible force, the invisible force behind it will certainly have a lot of pressure to put. But do you know which is the vigor that drives him? The word of the Lord. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which comes from the mind of Christ. He has his life oriented to the mind of Christ. He has everything that has been given for him from the word of the Lord, and he cherishes and nourishes in that. And is never worried and is never feared. Because Lord God Almighty is with him as a mighty, terrible one. And it is Lord who is going to provide him the pasture. Because it is he who is going to be in the presence of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, day in and day out and study the word of the Lord and be prepared. And it is he, when he has been preparing in the word of the Lord day in and day out, he has been driven the way half Jeremiah tells, his word has been put in me like a fire and it is burning. And whenever he opens his mouth, it will be a fire to consume you all. To correct your path, to walk in the light, to be the salt. And not to follow the instructions of this age-old practices which have driven them to a land flowing with milk and honey. But they thought, why now we should be absolutely available to look and understand upon the things pertaining to the commandments and the statutes and the judgments of the Lord. And better we look upon like a traversing donkey under every green tree, under every green hill, and let us go and pour our libations to them, having the main effect, thinking upon the details of life to be number one, rather than the Creator, the one who gave them the freedom so that they could enjoy such kind of a hills and every green tree by enjoying the nature of the Lord to worship Him. They went along to make their own creation to be their God, and they failed. And they have been written for us as an example to be called as Bama. 
Once again it is repeating in this church age. Every believer have lost the eye in the Poltima privileges of Christ given for us in the spiritual heavenly realm of blessings. And they are looking their eyes upon the physical monetary value of this life. And some pastors are wounded so bad. They think the cryonics, the cloning, the nanotechnology, the biotechnology, the genome technology is the root cause for all the things pertaining to resurrection. And our Lord told about that 2000 years back and till now we have not learnt it and now we are really growing up in the technology end and we will certainly achieve it. And what they are going to achieve? They say they are going to achieve resurrection. This is no way different from those people who entered into the land of Ezekiel chapter 20 verses 28 under every green tree under every high hill they went along to think they can give great sacrifices they went along to think they can pour their drink offerings to the Lord and today they are thinking Lord's resurrection is by the technology that is being grown up anything and everything they may try to regenerate this body of a physical realm but not with the things pertaining to the divine spark which is given for you at the moment of your physical birth which hits the format soul so that you can become a rational living being a thinking living being in other words nothing can come so closer than the divine spark which has been there in the hand of the law that divine spark to remove from you it is there in the hand of the Lord to provide for you your life and death is there in the hand of the Lord at least know that and you fear this glorious estate which has been given for us in this mystery doctrine of this great and unique dispensation of the church age calls for you all to have that great leadership type of thinking in Christ having the same mind of Christ and not to be once again holding forth as if you live according to the rudiments of this earth or the decrees of this earth or the ordinances of this earth those things which have to be put to death there is no excuse for it And there is no any other thing, reality for it. But we are being called as an heavenly citizenship. We are being called to have a heavenly thinking. And we are being called to be worthy enough to understand, to look and consider the polity of privileges of Christ and rich MGG and witness for the truth in this church age. The Old Testaments who have been told to teach them as the bona fide gifted for them to teach through Moses, the laws, the commandments, the instructions, but they failed and they became Bama. And today the same congregation of the church is following to be the so-called enlightened Bama, though they have all the privileges for them not to be as Bama, but to be as MGG believers in Christ who have reached the perfection state by witnessing the truth. And who should have reached that perfection state by the perfection stage by the time they are being really spent much of the things on this earth why and where they are failing thinking that there is a great profit for them on this earth thinking that they can have greater life on this earth realizing to think what else is there on this earth apart from to make huge money in the things pertaining to the Christ teaching Dear brethren, you need to know why are you being kept alive on this earth. You need to seek and search and understand the true purpose in the Lord. You need to certainly realize that we could no longer be called as once again Bama on this earth. This Bama, which is of no value at all, how painful it would have been for my Lord to realize his people. While Moses was there, he was appreciated to tell. He told them how rightly they have spoken, that they shall have a heart of fearing to the Lord and follow all his commandments. The same things pertaining today to the church. If there would be greater than Moses when we are being indwelled by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, how much more we could be really able to sustain to be a witnesses for such teaching through the bona fide gifted pastor teacher work. 
how grateful it would have been for us so that the generation could not be called once again as Bama who walk against the principles of doctrine who are looking upon the fear taught by the commandments of men rather than commandments of God who have their eyes fixed upon to make profit on this earth in the earthly treasure manners but not are having the eyes upon the Lord to make the spiritual treasure manners and if they have been possessed with the spiritual burden they would certainly know what is the purpose of being an ambassador in Christ what is the purpose of being a royal priest in Christ what is an ambassador what what is the purpose of being an heavenly aristocrat in Christ they would have certainly understood about these things how weak is this heart dear brethren it is more weak than the imperious warish woman because it constantly wants to exchange the divine establishment of the word of the Lord to the neutralized fakery of lies by the teachings of Sampa. Therefore they say you come to Christ you will have great prosperity. <laughs> but our Lord spoke about the prosperity in the soul as your soul prospers in the word of the Lord so shall be. And our Lord in return tells the part of the soul, knows, that is what the mind. The mind should have your sunesis, your enlightenment of your understanding, so that your entire soul could be lightened up with the word of the Lord. That could be given only by our Lord until unless we are being there in his presence. Until unless you desire to know the truth. Until unless you learn to understand the truth what profit you will gain at the presence at the presence of Christ at the Bhima throne if you have not done his work rightly if you have not executed his plan properly what gain you will have that gain may be profitable for you and for your wife and for your children and for your congregation heaping for themselves itching ear oriented pastors who don't teach and endure for you all in sound doctrine but in the presence of the Lord, the matter is very different. He loves and cherishes with those pastors who are faithful enough to cherish and nourish in the sound doctrine teaching of proper isagogics, categories and exegesis with the right dispensing technique of dispensations with the proper intense harmonical principle of daily teaching the word. I repeat, daily teaching the word. He cherishes in such kind of a servant. But you all are being filled like the Naman's leprosy. And then, when once that leprosy was been cleansed, Geheji, the way who went along to take that leprosy, the things pertaining to the church age believers before the foundation of the world, Lord cleansed you all and kept you, provided when you believe upon the Lord, says Romans 8, 28 and 29, those whom he have foreknown, he has called, whom he has called, he has justified, and he has justified them for the predestination to be conformed to the image of his dear beloved son. There the first leprosy has been gone. And after you believe in the Lord, your leprosy has been cleansed out. But do you know how that leprosy disease has been spread along, spread along again in the pulpits? By the so-minded Geheji pastors in search of treasure on this earth. Geheji thought and told to Naham, telling to the point, my servant needs them, my Lord needs them, he asked me to get this money. Then Elijah tells, through all of your generations you will have this leprosy accompanied for you. Do you not think my mind and heart was with you when you were walking and talking with Naman? How many days more you want to enjoy the leprosy on this earth? Can't you be cleansed? When you rebound in the fellowship of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, cursing will be turned into blessing. Our Lord knows how to provide us these things. Provided when you go there with a repentant heart. And not like the way how David prayed. David prays, Lord, remove not the spirit from me. And in this church age, the spirit was absolutely given for you to be indwelt in you. And you cannot pray the way how David prays. You are insulting the Lord. Neither you can pray for the prayer, Lord, give me thy spirit already which is there in you. And you are having a blasphemous prayer. 
All these things should be taught for you in the church by the so-called bona fide gifted pastor teachers who have been certainly given this bona fide gift and faithfully being prepared to tell you in the maturity of the wisdom of Christ when they are being daily taught under the presence of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They should teach you up. They should train you up. And these things will be taught for you graciously and freely. And my contemporary pastor teachers may have the privilege of teaching though they have the bona fide gift. But the word of the Lord tells for us until and unless you are being there in his presence to learn and to understand the word. Till the time you cannot teach and your teaching doesn't have any effect. The teaching which has to be a resultant for them to apply in the practical mannerism of their lives. Dear brethren, it demands that your word should be like a fire. And that word which should be like a fire will be given by Lord God Almighty. He tells. The congregation will be like pews or woods. Your word like a fire it is going to consume them in Jeremiah chapter 5. If our Lord could do those things to those Old Testament saints and believers who have not been permanently indwelling by the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who had the word to be very specifically called as endowment, how much more it should be for us in the church age under the ministry of enlightenment when you are being known to understand that rebound is a solution to be controlled of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to yield for that spiritual vigor in Christ. The very significant for the one who possesses abundant riches. He knows what burden such possessions bring. And another one has said, There is a burden of care in getting them, number one. And of fear in keeping them, number two. Of temptation in using them, number three. Of guilt in abusing them, number four. Of sorrow in leaving them, number five. And the burden of accounts to be given up at last concerning them. Because of that riches what you have gained. And do you think this all is needed? Lord knows how much to provide for you. How much is needed for you. How much is really worthy for you. So that you can have your number one priority for the word of the Lord. And you can cherish and nourish in it. Lord knows very specifically about those things. Then why do you want to worry? Dear brethren. As a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you may think you have the bona fide gift and you will come and tell to the Lord, I will follow you. I will follow you in this example. Peter himself said, I will follow you till to the point of death. But our Lord said, Before the cock before the crow could before the cock could crew three times, before that you're going to reject me. And he said, Satan tempted, but I prayed for you. When you return, when you certainly come back, strengthen thy brethren. The same lesson what we can learn in Matthew chapter 8, verses 19. A certain scribe, the one who was writing the word, came and said to our Lord, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever you go, or wherever you go. Today, at the moment of there, commemorating pastorship or making them to be the pastors of the church they also have the same mission telling to the point or ordination of the pastors to be called they say Lord we are there here to teach thy word and they take this and you know what happens if they are not in the presence of the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by sacrificing their life as a temporary one and daily studying the word of the Lord so that they can daily teach the word of the Lord and when our Lord was about to depart to the other side, this man, this scribe, who had been attracted by something in our blessed Lord, the same way how today many people are attracted for money in the blessed Lord, desired to follow him. He saw no difficulties in the path, the rich scribe, no refusal of self and no cross. And besides this, he thought he could follow in his own strength wherever the Lord might go. And he was instantly met by the presentation of the cross and then the rejection and loss it would entail he disappears and he is heard of no more the great pastor teacher work today many people think in this manner no difficulties in the path no refusal of self no cross but our Lord said unless you take up your cross and you follow me you cannot be my disciples 
and besides this he thought he could follow in his own strength no way your mind which has been made up of mud cannot understand the spiritual phenomenon until and unless you are a believer in the lord and you have this true bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church and until and unless you are being certainly controlled by lord god the holy spirit in each and every day each and every breath in each and every second and you have been thoroughly trained you cannot have that strength it is the lord who has to provide you that strength and what a great privilege it is for us to have such strength and that strength which our lord gives we are able to do but not under the physical energy of your strength which you are able to do therefore he disappears because he never understood what is the loss behind it and the next man was different he did not shrink from the path but his heart was divided and hence his request suffer me first to go and bury my father affection for his father was drawing him back but whosoever loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me saith our lord as a pastor teacher you have no relationships no partiality your number one relationship as our lord says when they came and told your mother and your brother have come our lord said those who are here who sit and do the will of god the father they are my brothers and they are my mother and they are my sisters that's it that's the right duty of the pastor teacher which is of so much essential that the people should learn and many people since they have not understood about these things they are thinking they can come to the ministry but it is not the presence where our lord lord asked moses to say and to learn the things were an isolated place only with the lord he never had anyone there to be more enough he never said lord let me go and have with my utopian wife such and such things or let me go and see this no isolation 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 so that you if you have your tape box the tapes which have been provided for you to listen isolation for you and when you have been properly trained you know how to orient the responsibilities towards your parents because the first responsibility towards our heavenly father is number one priority then the responsibility that we can think we can have towards the earthly parents Our Lord therefore claimed his immediate and well-hearted allegiance by the word follow me and let the dead bury their dead and he must learn that if a disciple neither the inclinations of his own heart nor the impulse of the tenderest affections but the will of his lord must henceforth govern his path the will of our lord should always govern our path and that will of the lord which should always govern our path dear brethren is nothing but to stay in his presence and learn the word a temporary sacrifice of your life so that you are immortal until the work of the lord could be accomplished in you and lord keeps you alive for the sake of those men who really need your teaching and lord keeps you alive so that you can be a witnesses for his truth that you are a voice on this earth a voice bowing down kneeling down and teaching the word because our lord thought for them several times and he even uses you to be bowing down kneeling down and teaching them for this great work in christ Therefore when he was entered into the ship his disciples followed him no sooner had they embarked that a great tempest arose we are here shown the character of the disciples path that is what even we when you are entering ourselves into this ministry we to have the same problems because it is in the disciple has to meet the full opposition of satan's power besides this it will often seem as if the lord were asleep as if he were acquainted unacquainted with the peril of his followers he would have them learn that he is all sufficient for the dangers of the road that is what the pastor teacher will be always what all the dangers that have been there on this road he will learn to realize lord's gracious grace is enough he is enough for us he is all sufficient for us 
And therefore Moses cherished and nourished in the presence of the Lord and he came and taught. Whether they hear or forbear, he taught them. So should be the ministry for each and every pastor teacher on this earth. Whether they hear or forbear, you should teach them. Without teaching them, you cannot. And he is all sufficient for all the dangers of the road. However fierce may be the storm, or all is under his control, and however fierce may be the storm, but all is under his control, and the power of him who has called us to follow him is more than equal to all our emergencies and able to conduct us safely to the other side through all trail and opposition. That's enough. His grace is sufficient for you, saith our Lord, to the things pertaining to power. And my grace is archaeo strength, the strength which is of unceasing or unfailing against any odds. But only thing that we are failing today is not making our body to strive for mastery, to sit and study the word of the Lord and to teach in the true calling of the Lord. If you are a pastor teacher and if you are not daily teaching the word of the Lord with proper isagogic categories and exegesis, morning one hour, evening one hour, then you are no pastor teacher in the sight of the Lord. You may be a pastor in the sight of your congregation by your well report, good report, bad report. You may be a pastor by your testimonies being converted. You may be a pastor that the world may realize you as a pastor, but the Lord will never realize you and recognize you as a pastor if you don't teach and don't isolate, don't exegete. And daily, with the dispensing technique of dispensations, if you are not rightly dividing the word of the Lord, the world may know you as pastor, but the Lord will never know you as pastor. Because many will come and say, Lord, in thy name we did this, in thy name we did that. But our Lord says, you workers of iniquity, get out, I don't know who you are. But the one who does only the will of Lord God the Father, them I know. So be aware about these things. Learn the great principle of lessons which have been taught for us in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 29. Where our Lord says, you stay here with me, then I will teach you, so that you can go and teach in return for them. The fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, where you and I should stay and learn the word of the Lord by nailing down before his presence, laboring through the dust and learning them and teaching them to the entire world again so that they could really know what is that we have been taught and we have been learned in Jesus, our Lord, his wisdom. So that we also can have the great leadership type of thinking in the Lord. And we also could be once again not entangled to the elements and the rudiments or the things pertaining to this world. But rather we could be here available to the great work in Christ. So dear brethren, consider and think over these issues. Life is too short. The burden laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Once again we are not here being called to represent the Bama in this church age. We are in return called to represent the manifestation of the true witnesses of the Lord through His various glory. Only when we are being prepared. And if you are not able to understand about these things, Lord help you. Because dear brethren, Time is too short. Responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. We would have been better born in the Old Testament saints because we would have been not under this great burden of our Lord. And we wouldn't have been under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. And we would have yearly once gone through and gave the things pertaining to the rituals. But now, when Lord seems fit for us to keep us alive in the church age, He knows that every believer can acquire it, can possess it, can certainly do it in practical life. Therefore, He has given you the great strength of all power, the strength of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the strength which is of a great one because of your volition. It is Lord who shall give you that fearful heart. It is Lord who shall enlighten to you those scriptures which He has written and kept. It is Lord who shall teach to you according to His mind. And it is in you that you are greater than Moses, greater than Jeremiah, greater than anyone else in the past. Above, including our Lord said, a great example about John the Baptist. But the one who is least in this kingdom is greater than John the Baptist. And in the old dispensations, not, and in the old dispensation believer, none is greater than John the Baptist. What a privilege it is for us. Do you think all those things are fictitious words? They are reality. They are your life. What our Lord revealed and kept for us as Deuteronomy 29, 29 belongs to us. Which he has sealed and kept it belongs to him. And what he has revealed for us, we are not able to look certainly with an enlightenment eye because of our sin nature being reigning in us. 
Dear brethren, this is of a very sad part. The main purpose is the pastor teacher should train you up. If the pastor teacher doesn't train you up in this regard, the new believers are not seeking to the Lord to provide those pastors after the mannerism of God to teach you and to train you up in the word of the Lord. The main mistake arises on you. Your volition is negative. You are interested to seek and search those itching-minded ears pastors who do not end your sound doctrine. If you really love the word of the Lord, though the remnant may be small, though the people who walk in the straight gate may be small, Lord knows how to certainly bless you with the great reality of riches in Christ. The spiritual blessings. The entire world's wealth cannot buy even a soul. But you as a believer in the Lord are called to buy the spiritual riches in the Lord. And to do the work of your great reconciliation burden of ambassadorship when you are fulfilled. The things pertaining to the aristocrats of heavenly realm in this earth. Being royal ambassadors, royal priests and royal kings. And that royal kingship which our Lord has designed for us demands the way how the scribe came to follow and he left. More than a reality to answer them, even you are a church age scribe to write the word of the Lord at least once and you are being called to be a king, to sit upon the throne and receive the counsel of peace. So that none should take away thy crown in Christ and you should in return backfire them and say, you all failed, but by the mentoring power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, though we are Gentiles, Thaphanes, we stood for the truth. And it is not on our own strength, it is by the strength of Lord God Almighty, which drives us to stand. So dear brethren, fulfill the burden laid down upon your shoulders, and which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order will telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us so very simple, believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire, to possess, to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry so thon logan, herald the word in season out of season because of the diamond from my witnesses where you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in Wellington Follow the Bible in our hands and number two diamond to my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, they will not worry besides nature. The entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord. No matter how the chips may fall, we do not worry. Our work is to be our witnesses for the truth. It is not what the world thinks, it is what the word teaches for us to think as the mind of Christ. Thought teaches for us to be an example of Him, like Him on this earth. So which way you go, you decide, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are very grateful for this great privilege that was given to our fellowship with you through the word. Father, we pray that many people today have taken into Naaman's leprosy in their lives and the way Gehazi bought and once along for the generations to generations, these pastor teachers are taking upon such leprosies of money. Help them to get out of those things so that, Lord, they could be a witnesses for the truth and thy truth alone they shall reign and they could be empowered to teach every day when they are being there in thy presence, learning and growing up in thy word. Help us to rightly divide the word of the Lord through proper isagogical categorical and exegetical explanation of the word with the right dispensing technique of dispensations so that in the trials and temptations it is you who are going to certainly give us the strength to endure all of these things and you are all sufficient for us and your arcuous strength through the mind of the Lord is all sufficient for us what else we require then your grace upon grace being bestowed upon us the first grace being salvation the second grace being the knowledge of Bible doctrine and the third grace in fact when indeed it is the rebound process in the privacy of our priesthood to certain deal with thee such a great and wonderful glorious fearful God in Christ's name we pray sovereign Lord may Lord get the Holy Spirit enlighten us Amen